the cast and crew of Fallout did an interview teasing season two of the show, which is now thankfully been confirmed. Fallout is one of those shows that satisfies both long-standing fans and newcomers. So we're going to check out the clip because we really enjoyed season one and we hope season two is just as good. Uh, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but yeah, we're really grateful for uh, the, the numbers. It's a little abstract for me. For me anyway, uh, have a feeling at all. I just sort of see uh, that no one's mad at us. I like that he said he's just happy that no one's mad at him. <laughs> I like that they seem to be aware that they are going to make people feel very passionate, either for or against. But from all the interactions that we've had with you guys on the channel, almost all of y'all have enjoyed it. There have been a few of you who have pointed out things that you didn't like, but by and large, I think it's got to be like a 90% interactions of the people who liked what the show did. Yes. I felt like to do justice to the tone of the games, there would be no way of doing it without my friend Graham, who's the funniest comedy writer I know, because it is a merger of comedy and drama and action. That was the big thing I was worried about going into the show was that they wouldn't hit the comedy aspect. So much of the comedy of Fallout is so morose. <laughs> it's so dark and morbid yeah. that you could mistake it if you weren't familiar with the games as not being there at all. But without that, it really is a depressing story. So you need you need that little bit of silliness. And I thought it was funny, like from the very beginning when you saw Lucy like in the vault talking about like cousin stuff and like arranged marriages. It was just, I thought it was really funny. It was always going to be comedic. And so like by leaning into that without getting goofy, I think like it was why the show worked. Jonah uh, prepares us just by throwing us in the deep end and saying action, basically. My, <laughs> my, Aaron has a crazy first day. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to comment on the fact that most people in our comments have said that Maximus is probably their least favorite character. And I can now confirm that he is not awkward only in the show. He's awkward in real life as well. Because that was the most awkward answer I've ever seen in my life. The key to Lucy is actually the two tones of, of the show. It's the two genres. It's her upbeat, positive attitude, but the, also the heart, you know, her love for her dad, her motivation, her strength, her toughness. And I was really struggling with her privilege, her just being annoyingly optimistic, annoyingly positive, you know, and, and her privilege, you know, believing that she's going to go up and rebuild America. Uh, and how to deliver that speech. And then Jonah said, as you're saying that, just look around you, look around at all these people who are living their lives, who have families, who who are surviving, and then and then say your speech as honestly as you can. And that was one of the biggest moments of like unlocking. And see, you know, this is why everyone loves Ella Purnell as Lucy, because she's able to admit to herself, she's like, God, I was struggling with how annoying yeah. and privileged this character was. But then also the fact that she is much deeper and like she loves her dad, she loves her community. And she yeah. honestly is supposed to believe that she can rebuild America. And she and like Nolan weren't afraid to make a flawed character, yeah. to let her be annoying versus pretending that she's not annoying and then having the audience be annoyed by her. Exactly. If they're in on it, we can all laugh about it. And yeah. it worked. It was really, really funny having her be so obnoxiously optimistic. Yes. Um, and, then and just not clued her, in. Well, and then watching her grow as she yeah. was up top. Yeah, having a story arc turns out to make really good stories. Yeah. Like having character development turns out is crucial to be able to connect with characters. I think it's awesome because it showed that a lot of people just want good stories. Yeah. Most people just want to see great stories. Like fully fledged out characters. A lot of people who wouldn't have agreed about their taste in shows going into Fallout, were able to find a lot of common ground coming out of Fallout, especially around the idea of like, do you or do you not like female protagonists? Because with Lucy, everybody loves Lucy. The words were on the page. You know, Geneva and Graham really knocked these scripts out of the park. And, uh, and for me, it's no different doing this or anything else I've ever done in my career. You read it 250 times and you turn yourself over to an imaginary set of circumstances. I don't believe in making choices. I don't believe in playing characters, to be quite honest with you. I believe that it is holding up a mirror to nature and it is uh, immersing yourself in the world beyond the words. I feel like this makes me look at Walton Goggins in like a completely different light. So he reminds me of when Russell Crowe was saying he doesn't play into like all of those like acting yeah, like, yeah. schools of like, immersive acting or method acting he's like just do it mm -hmm. just, just act the part like a no-nonsense approach to acting yeah 
And Wong Zagong is basically saying, like, he just immerses himself in the set and imagines himself and how his character would act in those scenarios. And then it's basically just having a good script, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal because he's such a good actor. They're all praising the script. Uh, one thing that I have heard some people in the comments mention is, is Fallout good or have our expectations become so lowered? that even things that are just average seem good. In my mind, even if Fallout is average, it's so much better than what we typically get of video game adaptations that that might just kind of be the standard that you have to aim for. Was it perfect? No, but it's an adaptation. And it it didn't put me in a position where I was at odds between my love of the video games and my love for the show. Where would you guys like to see each of your characters? Do you have any wants of where you want to see your characters in the next season? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I would like my character to have a very cute puppy that she carries in her arms the whole way through the wasteland. I like that. Okay. I just want more time in the power Some suit. That's cream. all I really want. You want. I would like carbonara in the okay, wasteland, so Ella, please. Ella wants to work with more dogs. Got it. More okay, dogs got it. And more foods. Less spam, more carbonara. What does Max want? Max, I don't know. But to be alive, right? <laughs> to to continue else? surviving? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cool that we're filming this meeting. <laughs> this, is cre- this creative discussion. One thing that I, I would like is uh, there's a like a, a something that's mentioned in in passing uh, in the in the in one of the episodes. I won't say which one, but it is a story that that you could tie back up, and I think that would be a lot of fun. The games are beautifully designed, beautifully realized. So our our secret weapon was reality. So you don't want to try to do the power suit and computer graphics. You don't want to, you know, try to do as much real as possible. So design a beautiful suit in, uh, in partnership with our incredible special effects vendors and teams. Uh, and then Adam Shippey, an extraordinary stunt performer and actor, came in to, to, to master it over the course of, we practiced, rehearsed with that suit for months to make sure he could, uh, he could pull it off. Now, I really like that statement because it shows that his focus was on practical effects, which I feel like really made a huge difference for the show to make it feel more real. And it obviously seems like that's going to be continued in season two. The thing that brought me to Fallout was procrastination. <laughs> I, was, I was in between Batman movies and I wanted to kill some time and someone recommended this absurd, violent, dark, amazing video game named Fallout 3. And I just thought it was unlike anything that I had experienced before. The whole vibe of the crew's pretty awesome and it does seem like there is a commitment to sticking to what worked in the games obviously it has to be an adaptation hearing jenna nolan talking about coming to them you know in between the batman films um you can see the thread of how the changes still make sense to like people who play the games i think that that's a big part of why this series was successful and it sounds like that's going to continue to be the template moving forward which is great because as we talked about in our video you know, anytime something's successful, there's always people who kind of want to insert and then add to mm-hmm. it. And like they said, there's so many thousands of hours. They already have had to leave so much behind. There's not really a whole lot of room to add unnecessary stuff. I'd love to see season two be longer because I just saw a report came out that they like had their numbers come in. It is the most successful show they've ever. So they should definitely double down and they should uh, make season two, but they should make it longer. Now, I will say, though I enjoyed listening to the interview, uh, they didn't tell us a whole fucking lot about season <laughs> two. It seems like they kind of know the hype around the show, and they're like, hey, hey, let's milk it a little bit. And let people know there will be a season two, yeah. but really dance around what's really going to happen. Because Ella for now talking about wanting a puppy dog in Carbonara. Highly doubt that's going to happen, lady. Um, Max is talking about just wanting to be alive. I completely veto that and hope he dies in season two. And Walton Goggins talking about his scene. I don't even know what scene he's talking about being wrapped up. The only one that seems reasonable is uh, her dad being in the power room. Yeah. Yeah. Assume they're going to have a showdown and he's going to be wearing the power room. I would assume he's going to continue wearing the suit. <laughs> yeah. You don't just stop wearing the power room. <laughs> but these are just our thoughts, you guys. Let us know in the comments what you want to happen in season two. Subscribe, like this video, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.